AI talent is now costing some companies over $250 million for a single engineer. And Palantir CEO Alex Karp just dropped some truth bombs about why Silicon Valley completely missed the mark on AI. So while tech giants are throwing money at talent board like it's 1999, Karp is calling out the entire industry for overhyping LLMs and creating a false narrative that's hurting workers. Companies are paying millions for engineers who don't even understand the fundamental problem. LLMs are just raw material, not a magic solution. So is this the reality check the AI industry desperately needs, or is Carp just protecting his competitive advantage while everyone else scra uh, scr scrambles to try to get scrapped? Let's jump in here and take a look at this today. Welcome to Startup Pack. I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers as well as build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years of software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. So the AI talent war is reaching an insane level, and Alex Carb just delivered a masterclass. And I'm going to play just a little clip of it here for you. But he delivered this on why most companies are approaching AI totally wrong. While Meta throws $250 million at a single 24-year-old researcher, and everyone else fights over the same pool of talent, Carp argues the real problem is that Silicon Valley sold everyone a lie about what LLMs can actually do. So I'm going to break down today's controversial take and why he might be the only honest voice in the whole mess right now. Now, before we dive into this, make sure you leave a comment down below because honestly, my favorite thing and the best compliment you can give me is to leave a comment down below. I read all of them. So let's dive in and take a look at what Carp was saying here today. I'm going to play this video and I'll take it full screen here. One of the things I do think Silicon Valley is totally effed up. It's like in overhyping the value of LLMs by, by not listening to our treatises of truth that an LLM is a raw material that has to be processed and the processing of the LLM will change America and change the world. By overhyping the LLM and saying, you're gonna have AGI tomorrow, when of course that wasn't what was gonna happen, you had to go ad adversarial to, to workers because you had to say, well, of course you're gonna disappear tomorrow because our LLM doesn't work the way it should today and isn't, is very valuable, but it's not with, without, an ontology architecture, arch, architecture around it to make it predictive, a very a, unseemingly powerful predict, tool that's built on statistics, more precise, you had to say the less precise thing is going to be fully valued tomorrow. And so instead of doing what it should have done, which is you can actually transform your business by being open to different ways of doing business. So I, I really like this take, and he definitely dressed up for the occasion here, right? You know, I definitely have a sharp dresser here. But so Meta just offered a 24-year-old AI researcher $250 million over four years to poach him from a startup. Now, startup salaries for AI talents are now hitting over $500,000, and that's just the beginning of the bidding war. CARP warns that this talent inflation is forcing even successful companies like Palantir to become leaner and more efficient. So he's going the opposite, direct, uh, opposite direction than like Meta. The talent shortage is so severe that companies are promoting regular developers to AE engineers after a simple two-week course. Now, according to CNBC, machine learning engineers uh, average about 175,000 a year, but the top tier is commanding millions in compensation packages. So the irony is that most of these expensive hires don't understand the fundamental architecture needed to make AI work in enterprise. Now, Cart bluntly states that Elicon Valley totally messed up by overhyping the value of LLMs as a standard solution. He argues that LLMs are just raw materials that require extensive processing and architecture to deliver real business value, you know, like real software, right? And this is what we've been saying here on my channel for a long time, right? The overhyped cre created an adversarial relationship with workers by promising AGI tomorrow when that was never realistic. Companies are discovering their expensive AI initiatives often amount to chat GPT with a fancy wrapper. And that adds no real value because then chat GPT goes and changes something and it breaks everything. The promise of full automation uh, forced leaders to devalue human workers instead of enhancing their capabilities. So CARB's critique hits at the core of the problem, treating LLMs as complete solutions rather than building blocks or something bigger. Now here at Startup Pack, we've been building AI solutions for our clients. Every one of our clients were working on something to do with AI. Now it's not the core part of the product. It enhances certain workflows and certain pieces. Um, now, Palantir's secret sauce isn't just the technology. It's having engineers who extend products directly at client sites. This approach was initially pu uh, punished by the market because service businesses get terrible valuation multiples. 
Now, forward deployed engineers bridge the gap between raw AI capabilities and real world enterprise requirements. Most companies lack the organizational structure to properly implement AI because they treat it as a plug and play solution rather than building it as real software and understanding its limitations. LLMs are extremely powerful, but they also are very unreliable. So by understanding that, you can build safeguards around them to leverage their uh, power. Now, the implementation gap between AI demos and production systems that deliver actual value contains, continues to widen. CARP's model requires engineers who understand both the technology and the specific business context where it's deployed. Now, CARP argues that American corporate culture has a massive uh, di advantage because it's highly dynamic, meritocratic, meritocratic, that's a long word. I'm actually quoting CARP here. That's why I can't pronounce it. And he talks very differently than I do. But unlike European companies where corporate structures remain unchanged for decades, American businesses adapt quick to what works. This cultural plasticity gives U.S. companies an unfair advantage in implementing AI because they'll, quote, do what works, unquote, rather than what worked yesterday. Now, I don't know that I agree with him entirely on that because I've seen a lot of places where it hasn't worked. And that's the reason why at Startup Hack, when we work for our clients to implement AI solutions, we look at specific use cases where AI is strong, like pattern matching and data matching and being able to take human input and convert it to something usable. Right? These are systems where AI works well. If you try to solve every problem with AI, it's like a carpenter who runs around with a hammer saying they can build the entire house just with the hammer. Right? You still need a saw. You still need, I'm not a carpenter. So you need all the other tools. Right? But German corporate culture, despite being intellectually rigorous, struggles with the organizational challenges required for AI adoption. American companies learn to like and value what is working. That's a quote from Carp. Now, most enterprise AI de deployments fail because companies don't understand they need ontology and architecture around LLMs. Let me see this a different way. I heard it said before that you need uh, infrastructure, uh, uh, infrastructure intelligence be before you need AI. So you need IA before you need AI. You need infrastructure architecture before you need uh, artificial intelligence. The point being is if you just try to slap AI into any system where the data is a mess and where systems aren't connected already, the AI is not going to be able to do anything more than what uh, you could do in regular software development, or you're going to, going to do it in a very unsafe way. If you just take AI and strap it onto your production database, the chance it's going to make some serious mistakes is very high. So CARP emphasizes that LMs must interact with an understanding of your business as, as it is, not operate in isolation. Now, the goal is to extend your uniqueness rather than commodify your business with generic AI solutions. Let me say this a different way. Instead of just slapping an open AI uh, API somewhere into your application, you need to understand the specific use cases where LLMs are very powerful. Now, without proper implementation, architecture uh, businesses end up with expensive AI tools that don't integrate with existing solutions. And that's what we're seeing from this MIT research paper where we're seeing 95% of AI projects and corporations fail because they're, it's these executives running around saying, I got a solution, I got a solution, where's the problem? instead of looking for problems that they could actually solve correctly. Now, if your company has systems that aren't connected, reach out, because here at Startup Hack, our specialty is connecting systems to help your company work to maximum efficiency. Check out startuphack.com slash Spencer. Now, CARP frames AI de development as an ex as a central battle between Chinese authoritarianism and U.S. democracy. He warns that either we win or China will win. And what he sees is a zero-sum AI race. The competition isn't just about technology. It's about which system of value will shape the future of AI development. Now, Palantir's government work gives them unique insights into the national security implications of AI advancement. So unlike commercial AI companies, Palantir builds with the assumption that AI development has geopolitical consequences. So CARP's American First, and that's a quote, approach to AI puts him at odds with a lot of the Silicon Valley traditionalists uh, that have a globalist mindset. I think that's a target right at Sam Altman, if you want my opinion of what that quote is. Now, most AI implementations turn businesses into commodity by giving everyone access to the same generic capabilities. CARP wants businesses to become completely differentiated to the point where competitors just have to complain about, about you on TV. And that's another quote. I'm quoting a bunch from the speech that he gave here, so I'm picking out the really good parts for you. Now, the key is using AI to enhance what makes your business unique rather than adopting a one-size-fits-all. So again, rather than everybody just becoming a chatbot, find out what AI does really well, understand its strengths and its weaknesses, and then figure out where you can build it into your custom software so that your company can work 
like I said, to maximum efficiency. Now, as always, make sure you remember to drop a comment down below because I love hearing from you. Now, Carp argues that AI should extend the human mind rather than replace workers entirely, and I agree with this. Uh, Andre, Andre Carpathy actually says the same things too, right? He says it should augment human, not replace it. The most successful AI implementations enhance human capabilities while respecting, quote, the irreplaceable value of human judgment. It's another quote from Carp from this speech. So after a lot of years in software development, I've seen this pattern. Technology works best when it amplifies human strengths rather than trying to eliminate humans. Now, Carp points out that, the most co that most companies have, quote, a billion dollars of duplicative software that is just a Frankenstein monster lurking in your company, end quote. Now, this legacy software prevents businesses from getting basic answers like the cost of goods, efficiency metrics, and strategic insights. AI can help untangle these systems, but only if properly integrated with existing business architecture. So without addressing underlying software architectural problems, AI just becomes another layer to the Frankenstein monster. And none of us like Frankenstein. Now, companies are finally asking the uncomfortable question, what do we get for all this AI money? And many AI initiatives were launched during the hype cycle without clear success metrics or business objectives. They did it just because the executives, executives wanted to slap AI somewhere into their tagline. So CARP emphasizes that real AI value comes from, quote, radically increasing growth or, another quote, radically decreasing margins with measurable results. And this is what a lot of Silicon Valley folks are starting to talk about. We heard Sachin Nadala. We heard Andre um, uh, Pichai from Google. These guys are talking about that they say, as soon as we see the GDP move, that's when we know ADP AI is successful. And I agree with that. The market is learning to, learning to distinguish between superficial AI, superficial AI versus actually adding real value. So successful AI implementation should increase the happiness of people in your business at all levels, including the workers. Most implementations that I'm hearing about with AI, the workers hate because it doesn't really work very well and it's just the executives trying to force it onto them. Now, American businesses' culture ability to learn uh, to like what works gives U.S. companies a massive AI implementation advantage, according to CARP. Unlike other cultures that value traditional or theoretical frameworks, Americans pragmatically adopt whatever delivers results, and, and this being very stereotypical. But this cultural trait is very rare, according to CARP, globally because, and becomes crucial when implementing disruptive technologies like AI. So the combination of cultural adaptability Technolo technological capabilities and financial resources creates a unique American advantage in AI. So CART believes the cultural edge combined with proper AI implementations will quote, hypercharge the industry and maintain US technological leadership. Now, curious here what you think. Do you guys agree with CARP? Do you disagree? Make sure you leave a comment and make sure you like and subscribe. Here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers as well as to build custom software solutions for companies. So make sure you check us out at startuppack.com slash Spencer and here's some great information about our services. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As you are fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment. Perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology without expanding headcount. My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't we don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology, leadership, decades of experience, AI-powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out